England, June 4th, 1944. The men of the armies marched toward the southern ports. Equipment rolled down the roads. Men and machines took their places in the waiting ships. The men were British, American, Canadian, some of them veterans of Africa, Sicily and Italy, some new to battle. They lay in the harbors of the south coast a day longer than planned. The invasion had been scheduled for June 5th, but bad weather in the channel had caused a postponement. From the air, the German coastal defenses were hit by every type of Allied aircraft. As a climax to the terrible punishment of the German power dealt by our air forces in the months leading up to D-Day, pillboxes, minefields, coastal guns, bridges, ammunition dumps, radar stations, tank depots, road convoys, railroad trains going to and coming from Normandy were pounded without pause. The weather was still bad on the 6th, the sea promising to be choppy and dangerous. But the order was given, and the ships put out of the ports toward France. On board, the men were quiet, tense, grimly elated. The long years of training and waiting were behind them. Just over the horizon was the beginning of the final battle against the Germans. They could look around them and see the overwhelming strength that had poured from the Allied docks, factories, and arsenals. General Eisenhower's order of the day was distributed to every man on board the invading armada. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940 and 41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. A screen of naval vessels from battleships to PT boats guarded the convoy across the channel. Back in Britain, paratroopers marched out to their planes and embarked for the trip to Normandy.
The planes took off while the invading convoys were still far from the French coast. As the ships moved toward the opposite shore, the men on them could see a procession of aircraft preceding them in the early light. Offshore, the combined fleet swung into battle stations and marched up and down the coast, softening the surviving German installations with a murderous barrage. Our losses were not as heavy as expected. While this was going on, other airborne troops in gliders and tow planes prepared to take off from Britain. One by one, the tow planes lifted the heavily laden gliders into the sky. Now the shock troops of the invasion swung down the nets to the landing craft. Bombers continued their assault on the beach. In a duel with a shore battery, at point-blank range of a mile, U.S. destroyer Corey was sunk. A moment later, the battery that had hit it was itself put out of action by a salvo from the destroyer Fitch. 